Hi, everybody. Ah, it's been a little bit since I've been on here. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome to Cheryl's Get Your Life Back podcast. I'm so glad you took this time to tune in with me, especially during this time. Um, for those of you, you know, right now we're going through a pandemic crisis with COVID-19, the coronavirus. And for those who see this video later, way down the line, uh, it is April What's today's date? 21st, 2020. And we are still in quarantine where we are not, where we shouldn't leave our house unless we're essential workers um, and, you know, to take care of our needs, like getting food, medical appointments and things like that. Other than that, it is best for us to stay still. And so I know that becomes difficult. It's, sometimes it's easy in the first couple of weeks. we like, I got this. I'm good. After about four weeks and on, you start getting a little antsy. And I know some people now, they said they were good, but now they're like, I, I, I'm done. I'm tired of this. I don't know what else to do. You know, some of us use the time to be creative and tap into some things that we put aside or start new projects, start new jobs. I went to Office Depot a couple of days ago. I've never seen Office Depot, the one I go to, out of printers and scanners and faxes and all of that. They had a few, but it was pretty empty compared to how it's usually stocked. And the representative told me, the sales clerk said that because a lot of people are working at home, obviously, but a lot of people are even starting their own businesses or doing a side hustle or something to get them through while they are home on furlough or actually just out of work now. Their business or company closed or, you know, they just, or reduced hours and so, um, they're buying up all of these, you know, devices that we need, electronic devices. And it's so interesting how, where was my mind going? My mind was going somewhere. <laughs> Something with the technology and, and creating jobs and, and utilizing, and more people are on the internet now than ever before. I was thinking about um, streaming apps like this Zoom right here. I'm recording this on Zoom and how a lot of people I know didn't even know what a Zoom was. They didn't know what Webinar Jam was or anything, but they're really learning these internet streets. <laughs> and it's interesting how a lot of a lot of times during crisis, fortunately and unfortunately during a crisis, this happens. But the good side of what I'm getting ready to say is that people sometimes birth new visions, new projects, uh, creativity like none before and it took this for that to happen it's like they found a new purpose if you will do and that happens a lot even in our personal lives sometimes something pushes us towards a certain direction and it kind of forced us to make other decisions it kind of forced us to start thinking deep about things you know transitioning and making adjustments and a whole lot of stuff so i'm like okay that's the positive side we always want to have a positive side of this so i know a lot of people are going to come out of this with more than they had before new sense of purpose and that's kind of what i'm going to talk about today but um and then of course you know we have the sad stories well some of us won't come out of it well some people you know, not coming out of it evidently, but all of the loss that we had, loss of life that we're experiencing still, um, that's the sad, sad, sad part. It's not like, and even one life is important, but I was going to say, it's not like we look, okay, one or two, it's thousands of people. And so that's scary. And so I pray that you able to find something to get your mind off of all of the negative and, and hearing the stories because it does something to your spirit to tune in every day or to the news or go on to social media. And as soon, I know for me, as soon as I go on social media, I'm seeing a sad story. Somebody lost this person. I had lost in my family. Three family members died. This is just crazy. And so I try to do what I can do to try to stay positive for myself, for my family, my daughter, and for my the people that I serve and to come on here hoping that whoever watches this will feel uplifted in some kind of way. So I want to redirect your thoughts and your mind and your emotions to something else. So this is part two to I've been I did a two I'm doing a two part series, finding your purpose. Part one was finding your voice. 
And so today we're going to talk about finding your shoes. These are the things that we do when we're trying to find our purpose and feel it out and try to figure out what it is. Now, if you want to have a broad experience of working with me in a group coaching program, you can go to my academy, Get Your Life Back Academy, where I have a do it. I, it's not really a do it yourself in a sense. It's do it yourself where you can go through the course at self pace and take your time. You can look at the the, the pre recorded videos as much as you want to, but I'm working with you as well because I created a whole series of how to help you find your purpose, how to help you tap into your strengths, using your skill set, looking at your story that you didn't even realize was a story, your life experience, you are helping the people who are in the group are learning and finding out what else there is to them or how to take everything that they have acquired over the years. That includes their skill set experience, their story, and so much more, and turning it even into a business, into a mission, into a ministry, into a program, or just a new passion of something of interest to kind of enhance their quality of life, like make it more fulfilled. And so they're finding out a lot of this. So I'm helping them with the pre-recorded recordings, but also the Facebook group. I have a private Facebook group, and we chat inside there where I give more support, where we talk about um, the courses and have discussions and I answer questions and stay, keep motivating them and inspiring them and have people coming on and sharing their testimonials. So I'm excited about this. So if you want the full, because this is just a little piece of what I do on the um, in the academy, in the program, it's called Purpose Passion Finder Workshop. Purpose, Passion, Find a Workshop. If you go to Get Your Life Back Academy or if you go to bit.ly forward slash purpose passion workshop finder you will go straight into the class or you can go to get your life back academy and you can find the course and it should be like the third course that says purpose passion find a workshop sign up in there and like i said you can do it at your own pace you can interact through the facebook group the email that you're going to get all of these things you know and you never know where i might um drop in the group and just ask some of you guys to come in and share your experience, you know, what you're getting out of the program as well. And so, and I'm still thinking of other things to do, you know, to add into the course to make it, and it's not a really a course, it's like, it's a workshop, you know, but I'm saying course because of the platform, but the things you're going to learn from it. So it comes with a workbook. So actually I created the workbook before I created the program and I created the program based on the book because people wanted more of a um, interactive experience with me to talk about these things, you know, to help them um, process what are the things that they're finding out and, and how to kind of put it all together and, and how to apply it and, and see things manifest. And so that's why I added the coach, the group, component to it so we can work together and it's so awesome because you know we can learn from each other that's the good thing about it so finding your find your shoes is what we're going to talk about today and we're going to talk about what that means find your shoes part of finding your shoes is the same thing as what i mean by that is finding your purpose finding your passion finding something that you really are passionate about or you, it could be a talent it could be a gift it could be a skill set any strength that you have um, but once you do that or why you're doing that part of, of solidifying that this is what I want to do or this is how I want to be this is what I want to manifest it's getting your feet wet trying something out giving it a try is so important getting your yeah I heard that term before let me get my feet wet. Let me see how this feels. Let me see how, if I like this, if I'm comfortable with it. So that's part of, that's part of finding your shoes. Got to get your feet wet. Mm -hmm. You know, and then not hanging out. So you got to not giving up, but you got to hang out with it for a while. Hang out with the idea. Hang out with the activity. Whatever it is you're doing, or hang out with whatever it is you're saying. I don't know if you want to be a speaker, you want to be an author, you want to be a preacher, um, uh, some kind of entrepreneur, you want to start selling some kind of products, whatever that is, a mission. You know, maybe you want to travel and do certain things. Maybe you want to be a vlogger and you travel around the world. And so you're, part of you getting your feet wet is, let me travel to a close local place 
and try this thing and take my camera with me and see how it feels. And, you know, you got to get out there and try stuff. So I'm trying to help you get the ideas out, out of your head. That's what I'm doing. I want you to birth that thing by getting your feet wet. So that's what I mean about that. Then doing what fits. So only way you're going to find out if it's a good fit. That's like a relationship. How do you know if it's a good fit unless you date? Dating is collecting data, right? Or data, however you want to pronounce it. And finding out more about the person. So the same way you do it or the same process you go through when dating is the same process you go through when you're trying to find that fit for your purpose and for your passion. You want to see how it feels. You want to get information. You know what I'm saying? See if it feels right. And then get to a comfort level with it. That's all the process. It is. It's really all a process. Then you have to walk in that for a minute. Like I said, it takes some time. You can't always judge over one in one moment. Sometimes you can. If something is just clear and apparent, so a lot of times you get the no's right away before you get the yes. Because sometimes it is a yes, but either you're not comfortable with it yet or you need more information. Well, this is what the hangout part comes along. So you can know where you belong. You have to walk in it for a minute. Don't force fit it, but don't give up. You don't force it. Take your time. You know how you're trying your shoes and you walk around in the store a little bit and you're trying to see if it's too tight or if it's too big, you know, before you make a decision? Well, it's the same thing. So you want to find out where you belong. So that's the same thing is, let me get an example, trying something new. And it may not be new. Let me back up. It could be something like, like I said in the beginning, sometimes during this time with quarantine, you may think of go back into something that you started before. And you want to pick that project back up. And now you're like, this is the time to get this out. While I am still, and I'm not too busy for those of you who are home and you can't work for whatever different reasons, whether you, whether your hours were reduced or you were on furlough or, or you left, whatever that is during this time, you have more time now to try that thing again. And I did that with my product line. I always wanted to start natural products. And I remember when a couple of years passed and it was the time came where I just felt led to, let me do this. I started, how I did start was doing a, a lot of research about products, about the properties, what's good for your skin, what's good for your hair, what's good for your nails, what helps things to grow. I mean, all of that. And I had started a lot of research. I was going to the library. We didn't have the internet when I first came up with the idea. I wasn't, I am a cosmetologist and I was doing hair, but I wanted to make my own products. And so I did a lot of the research and I did a lot of notes and all of that. I would get books from the library and, you know, keep them for a week and take them back and get what I can get. And the idea came back to me again. And matter of fact, I was going through a crisis. I was on unemployment. I was unemployed, collecting unemployment. And that's not a lot of money, right? So I'm like, God, there got to be more. And I shared my testimony on a couple of videos on, on here on YouTube as well. Um, and, um, and probably on my podcast, Get Your Life That Podcast audio. But I remember just sitting there feeling led. And it's like I, I knew I heard God reminded me to go back to that desire and that passion. That's what I did. And I remember because it, it never left me. It was always inside of me. And it was like the best time. And guess what? My clients were like my first testers. Like everything is, I, everything is lined up. All you have to do is start creating. So that's what I did. Started getting my little kitchen lab, started creating, mixing stuff together. My clients loved it. My first batch actually came out great because I started with something easy, an easy formulation. I started selling that, get more money, buy more supplies. And it just grew from there. Same thing here. That's what I mean. And then knowing where you belong. Like I, for me, I felt like this is part of First of all, I'm a cosmetologist. I do hair. I love using quality products. I like, I, I like people to get a good outcome and say, wow, this really works on me. I like the way this feel, or this is helping my skin or whatever. And so I'm like, this is where, this is what I'm supposed to be doing right now. And sometimes you just know, you just know, you can't explain to people, but you know, and you feel it in your spirit, in your gut that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing right now. That's a good feeling because it's like you have confirmation inside. And sometimes that comes in different ways. People telling you, you know, um, how you're helping them. 
You know, it just, those are different signs you get when you know I'm supposed to be doing this right now. Don't know how long it's going to last, but not worrying about that. Let me serve now and do the best I can do to be my best self in it, authentic, serving other people, if that's your type of project or business that you're doing, and just, just live it out and enjoy it. Enjoy the moment. Because sometimes we let moments pass us by. So enjoy the moment. So knowing where you belong, um, it takes the flexibility. So all that takes flexibility, right? Giving yourself grace and time while you're figuring it out. Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Is this a good fit? You have to have flexibility in your spirit. You have to. You have to have patience and grace. That's with anything in life. That's with marriage, parenting. You need that. <laughs> you need those values. Um, and it may feel, you know, when you're doing something especially new or when you're taking it to the next level, it may feel a little bit uncomfortable at the time because it's like, whoa, some people have a fear of success in a sense where they're like, oh my God, they see the greatness in it. They see it growing, but then they get scared of the responsibilities. They get scared of the expectations that people now are going to require you because you have stepped out, you showed up what you're supposed to do, but sometimes we experience that fear where we're like, oh my God, this is now, now I've got to be accountable. Now I have to really do this thing, right? But let that inspire you. We all have to go through that process. And I, I believe, you know, I'm, I, I, I believe in God and I love how God works and he sent people to help you. So I want you to have hope that God will send somebody to help you and come along your side. He will send support. Okay. But anyway, yes, may you, may, you may feel a little bit uncomfortable at first. Um, but you know, you're growing, you're growing into, it's like shoes. I'm comparing to shoes. Sometimes you have to wear the shoes a little bit. And like they used to say back in the days when you buy leather shoes, you know, leather stretches a little bit, but I mean, it conforms to the shape of your feet, right? So sometimes you have to give things time and then you have to allow the environment and whatever it is you have inside of you, your shoes to gel together, to become in sync, to blend, to conform. You, the flexibility is what allows you to do that. So I don't want you to hurt and give up because something don't seem like it feels right. Because we all can experience that when we're trying to launch out into something and start something new, uh, you know, walking to our next level. That's part of the process, beloved. Be flexible. Take your time. Let every, You'll see the syn synchronization happen. You'll see the blending. You'll see the conform. You'll see things start to conform. You'll start to see things blend. And you'll know, again, that's another a confirmation like, okay, everything is working together for my good. Everything is working together. There's a domino effect taking place. And so that's also a reminder, yeah, this is, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is how it goes. Um, related, think about how a specialist or an expert finds their, because I'm talking about the environment now, right? Gelling together. This is what experts go through. Or when you become an expert, you have to find that area of expertise, expertise or wisdom. Once you know what your wisdom is and your level of expertise and specialization, then you have gotten to the next level. But you have to go through the whole process, all of the aforementioned things that I discuss for you to get to this point. So experts have to do the same thing, but they have to give, allow themselves to do that. This is how you become a specialist and an expert, if you will. <laughs> but an expert serves, when I say expert, now don't get twisted and start knowing your head uh, about perfection. We're not talking about that. You have strong skills or strong talent abilities in a particular area. That's what an expert is. Something you do all of the time. You don't even have to think about it anymore. Especially when you start doing something over and over again. You know it like the back, what they say, like second nature. <laughs> um, so you don't have to think about it that much. You may try to enhance and improve, but the foundation, you got it. You got it. And so that's what happens. You serve in a specific capacity. It could be an area of ministry um, or anything. It can be business, whatever that is. And like I said, you have to allow yourself to get there. Um, when you're doing this, when you're finding a fit, when you're finding that environment, that includes targeting 
your the market, targeting your customer, your client, um, constituents, the people who who are drawn to you, the people who are attracted to you, your brand, your business, your ministry, your um, just you, period. The essence of you, what comes, what permeates out of your spirit. What do you say in the earth? What do you put out there? What do you leave behind? What mark are you leaving behind wherever you go? When you pay attention to those things, those are, that's more confirmation. So, um, and for entrepreneurs, this is good for entrepreneurs, coaches, speakers, medical, mental health professionals, whatever it is, <laughs> finding your fit. I said mental health professionals and medical because even in every field, really, you look to see what area specialty you want to serve in. There's different types of doctors. There's different types of, me of uh, mental health professionals or counselors or therapists. There's different types of coaches. Some of them find a niche, whatever that niche is. I don't, you know, you can serve men and women, but maybe in a particular area. Maybe you have two or three specialties and you only serve in those capacities. So I'm just giving you examples because I want you to stop thinking. I want you to stop thinking, but I want you to find your shoes. Find your shoes, beloved. When you hear that term, and now I want you to have a picture what that what that looks like. Find your shoes, step in them, wear them for a while. Okay, that's basically what I've been saying. Get You'll get comfortable with it wherever you go. It's like trying them on, you in the store, you're walking around a couple of aisles, and you're like, you can tell after a while, okay, this, these feel good, or sometimes they start to hurt. They don't feel good, and that can be a big indicator that these this is not for you. That's somebody else's area. Because sometimes what we do, and I said this in the first in part one of finding your voice, and, and finding your voice, I think I mentioned trying to sing in somebody else's key. Ha! Huh? When that's not your key and you end up hurting yourself because you're trying to mimic somebody else. You're trying to be like somebody or you're trying to do it the way they do it. You may be doing the same thing, but you're trying to do it like them. You have to be you. That's why I mentioned authenticity early. You have to be yourself. When you do that and find that comfort level, oh, you start to soar because you find that fit. And that feels so good in your spirit, like, oh, this is me. This is my thing. I'm doing it my way. And then you have fans who love you, how you do it. That's what I'm talking about. I want you to find your shoes. Thanks for tuning in to Cheryl's Get Your Life Back podcast. I love having you here. This is one of the things I love doing. I don't care if it's one person watching. You know, I did this when I didn't have too many fans. We know people didn't know, don't know you in the beginning, so you keep doing it. But that's just something I love to do regardless. I'm like, well, let me just start a podcast and YouTube channel and little talk show and because this is great and so many people have told me how they are, they feel blessed and inspired and more motivated by watching my um, YouTube or my or listening to my audio podcast and they look forward to it and they they subscribe subscribe and they get the notifications like oh god god let me hear what Cheryl has to say today <laughs> and that makes me feel good so I don't care if it's two to three or three hundred or one thousand I'm gonna do this regardless I'm gonna do it until I'm too tired to do it anymore <laughs> and on different platforms you never know. That's another thing I can mention. You know, you you may fit well in different platforms and everything's going to have to be in one specific environment. Hey, but you got to start somewhere. And that's what I'm talking about. So click subscribe and like this video and share it. People need to hear something like this during this time. Really, really do need to hear some good news. Need to hear something that you, cause you to be introspective, but in a positive way. Not looking for flaws, not looking for faults, not looking for um, failures or whatever. Look for the possibilities that you have. Look for the capabilities. Look for the abilities. Look for your strengths. Tap into yourself. Pull out those wonderful gifts and treasures that you possess. And it's time for you to pick it back up. I, I, I think I did a podcast not too long ago. Pick it back up. Whatever that thing is that you threw away. And right now, this is the season for you to walk in it. I'm telling you, that's for some, that's a word for somebody. It is time for you to walk in that. Whatever that thing is you put away, it's time for you to pick it back up. That's somebody's prophecy <laughs> right there. 
this is the time. This is the season. And I really believe that this is the season of what was coming to me. Reset. A lot of you are going to get a reset in life. You know, like I said, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but a lot of times out of tragedies, a birthing or reset or revival starts to happen. And sometimes it took that to push us because we might have been having things lying doormat. We might, have be, we might have become complacent. And so it shook us enough to say, oh, things are going to be different going forward. That's a great thing. Some of you realize, okay, you know what? I need to do this. God called me to preach. I need to stop doing this and playing around. Or God called me to be an, an author, a speaker, uh, something. God caused me to open up doors for other people, use all of my skills and my knowledge that I have as a mental health professional or a medical professional or nutrition help. I got all this stuff. I can be serving people. I can create some kind of program, of course, a workshop to help people, to get people to gather together. I see a lot of people doing fitness stuff on social media right now during this time of this pandemic crisis. We're getting people to move and, and exercise because you know, you the more you stay home, sometimes you start eating more. You, I look, I feel that way like, oh, I'm ready to get another snack. I'm ready to get something else to drink. This is what happens, your home. is only but so much other things you can do. Now eating, not eating too much is the key and eating a good portion size and healthy things. And of course we got our stuff that we cheat on, but we just gotta be mindful of that. And so I like the fact that they're coming on and get people to move. I even saw Debbie Allen, she started something on Instagram a couple of weeks ago. And oh, so many people were following her working out. My daughter's following somebody some man who does these works out workouts in the morning and in the night and she's been on it when she likes to work out anyway but i mean so things like that you see what i'm saying you think of ways how can i serve people during this time what are the needs what are the pain points for people and that's how you come up with a way a solution something so something you have can help somebody else don't be selfish <laughs> Anyway, don't forget to visit the Get Your Life Back Academy. I'm also Cheryl Y. Howard if you want to know more about me and more about how I serve my programs, my services as well. Um, I do a lot. I do some one-on-one -on -one sessions and I do have room now for just two clients if you want to work with me. And go and you'll see my level of um, expertise and my specialty areas that I serve people in. And one, of course, is helping people to find purpose, helping people to live to live in purpose and to live on purpose, to help you break through barriers that keep you stifled so you can propel into your purpose. So that can be emotional um, stuff, right? You, you stuck because of something that happened, some traumatic experience and you wanna, you, 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 it's, it's keeping you captive. And so you feel like you're frozen, you can't move, like you put yourself in a prison. I help people break through those type of barriers so they can propel into their purpose so they can live fully. Purpose don't necessarily mean doing a, something new as far as, oh, let me open a business. No, just a new, a, a new mindset. So I also have a program dealing with the mindset, you know, that's that personal coaching for yourself to do a lot of this inner work, you know, so you can actually do what I just said, right? You have to work on the inside and then things will start to transform and then you can do all the things on the outside. So we have to really deal with what's going on. So I am a life purpose coach, certified life purpose coach, and I'm also a certified quality mental health, mental health professional in the state of Virginia. But right now I'm talking about the life coaching. If you need the mental health support, then that's something we can discuss as, as well. So I do contract work as that as well. So you would get full services when it comes to mental health support. But right now, we talk talking about life purpose. I want you to find your purpose. Part Two parts to that is finding your voice and finding your shoes. Just wanted to kind of give that comparison. Anyway, let me go. I talked enough on here. Until next time, be blessed.